Hi. So in the last video, I um, I showed those uh those Todd Witzbrocket albums that I got uh one day where it was a week ago now or so. These are the other four I found on the same day. So I thought I'd do a, a kind of quick video to um show them. This album here is a Tears for Fears album, The Seeds of Love. I remember when I was a kid, I wanted this album. And I mean, this is kind of what I class my like pre-music phase, you know, when you're a kid, or at least I should say, when I was a kid, you don't, you, you consume music kind of almost um, unconsciously. You don't really sit down and, and consciously listen to music. I remember the music that I really liked when I was a kid was like Queen's We Will Rock You and um, Flash again by Queen and um, there's a few ACDC songs I like to remember, some Beatles songs. But anyway, I remember one of the bands I liked was Tears for Fears. And I liked the song on this, Seeds, the, the title of the song, Seeds of Love. Um, and I saw this for secondhand last week, uh, so it was a dollar. And this looks like it came out at the time it was released, which I think was 89. Yes, 1989, uh, which was a pivotal, pivotal year in my life. Uh, Anyway, um, and so I think this is their second album. Sorry, third album, which came out after from Songs from the Big Chair in 85, which I also own secondhand. Um, I'd say this one was, uh, was slightly less uh, commercial, commercially successful as the Big Chair, but uh, it still sold um, a couple of million, a few million around the world. Um, and I listened through to this. I've only listened through to it once since I bought it and I kind of went through a few different feelings with it when I first the first two songs on this which I think are really strange songs to start it with Woman in Chains which I believe was the other single from this along with Seeds of Love um oh god damn it sorry I'm trying to f yes it was it was the second single and the second man which was Bad Man Song Especially that second song, Bad Man Song. Now, I wasn't actively listening. I was doing other things while I was listening to this. So just kind of from my um, half paying attention, I was like, why would they? I just think it's not a very good song. Maybe I should say. I was going to kind of go off a bit there. But it just meandered for a long time and didn't seem to really go anywhere. And it had, I can't even remember fully what, what, was going on but it just seemed like it was a very long song and a very kind of boring song with kind of no um no hook to speak of and it's kind of a kind of like moaning and half speaking and then i look at the track listing it went for eight minutes 32 so it was a long song however i persevered and i'd say the the next song sung the seeds of love which is the single which most people have heard and then we've got um Advice for a young heart, standing at the corner of the world, so on and so forth. I actually quite like the rest of the album. It's different. It's, I'd say, it's not as commercially pointed as Cheers from the uh, sorry, his songs from the Big Chair. And the way they describe it, they say it's pop neo psychedelica, psychedelia, progressive pop and jazz rock. And you certainly hear all those influences on it. Interestingly, from doing a bit of reading, I found out that that guy, so it's the two guys are Roland and Kurt. They both sing. You can hear their vocals and you kind of identify them, at the separate separation of their voices. But I've realized that he is actually the, um, the main mastermind behind the band. He has the vast, vast majority of songwriting credits across all their albums. And he actually left for a period in the 90s and, um, and he stayed on. Anyway, so I got that one. Next one, tricky. This is Max and Key or Max and Quay. I think it's Max and no, it wouldn't be Max and Key. Max and K. Max and K. Anyway, um, tricky. Tricky is a British trip hop, hip hop artist from the '90s. He's still around today, but he was, you know, found. He came to fame in the '90s and had most of us his major success in the 1990s an interesting album again i've only listened through to this once there are songs on it that i've heard before i i kind of i as i was listening i was like oh, i've heard that before i've heard that before but nothing i'm super familiar with however 
I'd say I like the album a lot, but I need to listen to it more to kind of absorb more of it. The main feature on the album, I think uh, it's her there. I think his name is uh, Martin Topley Bird. I think his name, Martin, Martin Topley Bird, Martina Topley Bird, who was a young girl. Jeez, you can see the bloody things of this. See, look at this. It's all smashed up. Um, he discovered her by chance sitting on a wall. She was like a 16-year-old schoolgirl, and he liked, she was singing. He was walking past from the street. Tricky was. And he heard her voice and he said, um, I like your voice. Will you be on my record? And she was. Um, she features on it a lot. It's almost like he wrote the album for her. Um, but when I was in the shop, I saw this in the stacks. This was a dollar as well. The condition's a little bit uh, worse for wear, but it plays fine. I played through it and it's no problem. The booklet's fine. It's just the jewel case is a bit fucked. And this is a bit scratched, but it plays fine. It's actually not, it's actually more than a bit scratched. It's a bit grimy. I saw this in the shop and Tricky is someone who I've heard a lot about, but I never really listened to his music knowingly. So I quickly just Googled this album and I saw it kind of got nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10 across the board. So I thought that sounds kind of like one of those, um, those missed classics that I've, I've never really listened to, but probably should. So I bought it and, um, Definitely pleasantly surprised. Definitely feel like this is something I'm going to listen to a lot more in the future. Talk Talk. Talk Talk are a band I know but actually don't know. They're spoken about by certain bands and artists who I respect in quite reverent terms of kind of like being very influential. And probably the first heard it, song I heard of this, they, that the cover version that no doubt did of it's my life. Then I also I also went back and then realized a, a te television ad that they, they used to play in New Zealand in the 1990s. One of the telco companies here they used "Life What You Make It," "Life's What You Make It," from Talk Talk. They used that as one of the songs on the ad, but I had no idea it was Talk Talk. I actually thought it was just a song written for the, the commercial, but I was a kid at the time, so. And I always liked that song. I own another of their albums. Um, I think it's it's my life. Yes, the it's my life album. This one, I couldn't get a grasp on at all. The Spirit of Eden. It sounded like similar to what I said about that Tears for Fears song. This whole album just sounded like a bit of a meandering mess. Now that might be sacrilege to a lot of people, but it sounded like I think the first song was like like really long. Well, it says in here nine minutes, but I'm sure it was longer than that. But anyway, it's, it's only six songs on the album, goes for about 40 minutes, and it just seems to go nowhere. It just sounds like there's like almost like, I don't know. It, just, it seemed like music without a purpose. Is music supposed to have a purpose? I don't know, but this music certainly like it sounded like it had no purpose. They define this as post-rock, and I've heard that these guys reinvented post-rock with this album, apparently. I like post-rock, to an extent, but I can't see it. Post-rock, art rock, progressive pop, experimental rock, and new wave. Maybe I need to listen to it more. It says here, Spirit of Eden was a radical departure of Talk Talk's earlier and more accessible albums. You can say that for sure. Compared to the success of The Color of Spring, it was a commercial disappointment. Despite its mixed reception, the album's stature, stature grew favorable in subsequent years, with contemporary critics describing The Spirit of Eden as an underrated masterpiece. See, that's the thing, is that these kinds of albums get talked about in that way. And I've gone and listened to other albums that have been described that way. And I often don't get it. And maybe that's a me problem. But anyway, this was a dollar as well. The condition of this is very good. It's excellent. Almost looked like it was never played, which wouldn't surprise me. This is the kind of album I can imagine someone buying, putting on once and thinking, that's not for me and never playing again. The whole thing is in perfect condition. I went through it before. and uh, So, yeah. Lastly, Chicane. Remember these guys? Okay, apparently it's, apparently it's one person. His name is Nicholas Brasgirdley. Brasgirdley? I would have guessed chicane were like euro 
Euro house or something like that. Like, I mean, they're from Europe, but well, they are from Europe too. He's British, but I mean, as in continental Europe as opposed to. Um, this is that kind of early 90s uh, electronic, they say here, trance. I'm not always the best at uh, kind of identifying electronic music genres because um, it's not kind of my wheelhouse exactly. Um, but I actually quite like this. I took a chance on it because a chicane is a name I heard a lot of and I remember they were kind of featured on dance compilations a lot in the early 2000s. But um, there's quite a, lot, quite a lot of ambient stuff on this that I quite like. Again, I've only listened through it to it once, probably need to give it more of a listen. Condition of this is fine, dual case, except that one of the hinges on this is broken. So four there for $4. Not bad, eh? Um, I think I'll leave it there. It's going to be a shorter one today. But um, thank you for watching.